we've lost 97% of the wildflower rich land in this country. Now, that's an area roughly one and a half times the size of Wales. Bees pollinate a third of our food and 80% of flowering plants, but they're under threat from climate change, toxic pesticides, disease, and increasing habitat loss. I'm in Peterborough to learn about a simple method that could be part of the route to saving our bees. This is kind of how it looked before we intervened here. Right. Bug Life is a UK-wide organisation dedicated to the conservation of bees, pollinators and all other invertebrates. So tell me about this meadow. So this is Hollywell Ponds and this is an area that is a wildlife site but the meadow had become very degraded and then a whole army of volunteers came out here and sowed seed on the ground. At the right time of year it looks absolutely fantastic, it's full of flowers. And I say now we just need to try and find some. <laughs> oh here we go. Yeah, so there's some mallow here and uh, ragwort's usually quite good for pollinators for doing a fit count. So what work happens in this meadow today? It's called a, a pollinator fit count. Um, and basically it's a very easy way for anybody to get involved in monitoring the number of pollinators. So it drapes this over the area. And every time an insect visits these flowers, we record it. Unfortunately, we could be in for quite a long way. <laughs> Oh, and we have got, here we are, we've got a bug on here. Oh, yes. Carrying out some pollination, so that's an other insect. There's yeah, another there hoverfly. Are. Hoverfly, see it coming yeah. in? There's a bee on that plant there. Because it all goes into a database by people doing it all over the country, and then they can average it out and see how our pollinators are doing. Let's find a good spot for our fit count. And again, just to remind ourselves, what's the importance of keeping our pollinator populations healthy? They're incredibly important to us. Roughly one in three of every mouthful of food we eat depends on pollination to some extent. Virtually every piece of fruit is so are tomatoes and aubergines and peppers and beans and peas. The beauty of our countryside, eight out of 10 of our wildflowers would disappear within a matter of about five years. It's estimated that pollinators are worth over 600 million pounds per annum to the UK farming economy. That does really put it into perspective, doesn't it? The service provided by pollinators is not only essential to human life, but also to the natural world. It goes all the way up that food chain of disaster, really, if we lose pollinators. Of the UK's 270 bee species, 126 are now listed as scarce, with 17 at risk of extinction. Much of this due to habitat loss. What kind of degradation are we looking at in the UK over the last few decades? Since the Second World War, we have lost 97% of the wildflower rich land in this country. Now, that's an area roughly one and a half times the size of Wales. That's a huge, huge area of pollinator food that's been lost. And the end result of it is that most of the good bits that are left are little isolated pockets, like almost pollinator zoos. And there's no way to get from one to the other for the poor pollinators. And this is why we need a solution for it. And this is kind of the ethos behind beelines. Beelines is a nationwide initiative bringing together a myriad of conservation and volunteering groups to create an interconnected system of wildflower insect pathways across the UK. There's a lot of science behind beelines. First of all, we map the places that are really good for pollinators on a local basis, usually on a county level. We draw imaginary lines on maps to join them up to start to put that connectivity back in there. So Central Park is actually on the Peterborough Bee Line. Last year, Bug Life worked with the Peterborough Council to plant a 200 square metre stretch of wildflowers bordering the city's flagship park. And as you can see, they have now cut it. 
Okay. <laughs> Typical. So does cutting it down encourage it to grow back up? Yes, particularly the annuals, and quite a lot of these are annuals. So we've got things like the corn marigold, blue corn flowers. Those are all annuals. Now, poppy seed will sit in ground for about 100 years, but it's an annual, and if that ground doesn't get disturbed, they don't come up. And that's why they all came up during the First World War, because of all the trench digging and the bombs going off. Disturbed the ground, up came the poppies everywhere. But the perennials, which there are some of in here, one of the daisy family, yeah. they will come back up whether you disturb the ground or not. Chopping stuff down does seem like it's the wrong thing to do, but meadow needs management. You know, naturally meadow would be grazed. I don't think they can really put a herd of sheep into the park. <laughs> do you keep a record as, as this gets mapped out? You're following it sort of around the country as these pockets get yes, created? Yes, basically if you do something, you can upload it onto the map. If we do something, we upload it onto the map. As soon as you've got around 10% of a beeline in place in the form of stepping stones, it will become active. And are you noticing that through the fit count data that you're receiving, these are helping to see an increase in pollinators? The most recent fit counts showed a rough doubling of bee numbers on average across the city between this year and last year. So that's a very, very positive sign. Definitely, it's, yeah, it's double. It's early days to say how much of it's down to this and how much might it be down to a particularly good year climatically or a bad year climatically. But it's very, very wow. promising that things are starting to pick up. And tomorrow, we are going to be doing some planting here. So you can start to see how these bits join up together. And we'll have made another great bit of pollinator connection. I have a feeling you're about to put me to work tomorrow, Paul. That's the idea. <laughs> I'll come prepared. Where are you, Ellie's? <laughs> An important part of the Beeline initiative is to spread the message that everyone should get involved, from letting your lawns grow, to garden and community wildflower spaces, and even herb plants on windowsills. There is now more pollinator diversity in our urban landscape than in our rural landscape. We've gone very much monoculture out in the countryside, whereas in the urban landscape, people have at least got gardens and garden plants. So Paul has gathered together some volunteers this morning here at one of the local sports centres. So let's find out what's going on. I think one of the Beeline hookups is about to happen. So it's a really important part of a big national picture that you're taking part in. And we're really hopeful that we will be able to deliver one of the first bits of completed beeline in the country through Peterborough. Right, so we want to come over and grab ourselves some cones. That's it, then fill your cone up with the seeds and go off and find yourself one of these areas and start seeding it. A gentle little sprinkle on the ground. Where are these seeds from, Paul? Well, they've come from a wildflower seed provider. And it's a mixture of annuals, perennials and grasses. And um, the reason for having that kind of mixture there is because in year one, you get a lovely display from the annuals. After that, the annuals will disappear unless the ground gets disturbed and the perennials will come into play. So now we need to go and find an area uh, where these poles are that hasn't already been sown. Yeah. It's a bit thick, but... <laughs> <laughs> a bit heavy-handed. So spread them out a bit. You're gonna put some more in as well, yeah? If you plant them too close together, only a few of them end up surviving, whereas if you spread them out more, you'll get more of them actually survive. While some of us are better at following instructions, enthusiasm is important too. Oh, all at once. There's more, you can spread them out down here, look. Very enthusiastic spreading of seeds there. Paul, what's the advantage of getting community volunteers and citizen scientists involved? It's about local ownership. They're going to respect this space more and they're going to understand why it's happened far more than if we just come in and plant meadows everywhere. Really quite fascinated what's been happening and yeah. how they're doing it and what they're doing it for. So have now you... I can see why they've not cut the lawn. <laughs> I was about to ask you, have you put anything on your window box or on your balcony or in your garden differently to I, help I have, I have a beautiful lavender bush um, that was in plant pots that wasn't really doing very much. So I actually planted it in the garden and it's absolutely flourished beautifully. But also I've not cut the grass as much and it's lovely to sort of like have the wildlife coming in the garden. Paul, why is this work necessary? Creating bee lines, putting that connectivity back there is absolutely essential for certainly the continuation of the kind of lifestyle that people are used to. 
It would be a very dull and boring world if we were to lose our pollinators. You'd go back to just having things like conifers and ferns, like it was in prehistoric days before all this wonderful abundance of florid beauty was created. And in many ways, the bee lines are like the motorways for pollinators. And of course, after motorways, you still need the bee roads and the sea roads, which is why even if you're not on a bee line, you can still do and should do something to make a difference for pollinators. But if you're on a bee line, you should do everything you can to try and make sure that that stepping stone is in place, that that line starts to function, that our pollinators can move around the country and continue to provide all that lovely food that we enjoy. Okay, everybody, it's now time to go stamping. So you can get all that aggression out by going and stamping on the ground and just pushing your seeds into the ground. Just a little thing can make a huge difference. And if we all make that little step, you would make one huge big step for nature. Sort out the bugs and the other things will sort themselves out. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and hit the bell button below for notifications. We'll see you next time.